Hello, I'm Fedor Dujan and I will be teaching you differential equations. Uh, this is quite an unusual course and I feel that I need to explain um, why I am doing what I'm doing. So traditionally, uh, mathematics and maybe all courses in university are taught um, as direct instruction. Right? So the analogy that you can think of is that uh, the main job of the lecture used to be to spoon feed you with knowledge. So here is, for example, uh, my son's first food that um, I gave to him when he was six months old. But the, what I want to say is that um, the whole learning process used to be organized as a lecture first. So when you come to the class and where the teacher actually uh, feeds you with knowledge, where uh, he transmits the knowledge onto you. Um, and the reason for, for this design is because um, in the old times, a lecture was the only way for you to, to, to get the knowledge. There was no internet, uh, the books were very boring, and again, if they are only available in the library or very expensive, then it's just really the, the best way for you to learn. Well, um, after the lecture you go home, and then you study, um, which means you do your homework and maybe some other learning activities. So then, well, in order to um, force you to learn, there is a test, and the idea here is that if you know that there is a test, then you will be um, intrinsically motivated to study. And then, in the end of the day, you get a grade, so which is either a number or, or a letter, and the grade is supposed to somehow assess the amount of knowledge that you have accumulated in the end of the course. Um, well, let me tell you why I think that th this is wrong and what I personally mm, have against it. So, uh, the, the first thing that is wrong here is that, um, okay, in the simplest situ situation, what if lectures are boring? Um, then, if lectures are boring, then you have to find an intrinsic motivation to study. Because you cannot um, learn from your lecturer, so which means you will have to go to the library and read the textbook, which may be even more boring. Or if the lecturer is just, if the explanations are unclear, then you will have to ask around, find another lecture. It's very, very complicated. And if you lack motivation to study, then you simply will not learn anything. It happened to to you, I'm sure, a lot of times, and it happened to me when I was a student, for example. Um, our lecturers of probability and statistics were very, very boring, and I, I didn't really learn anything. I only tried to study for the exam, and I passed the exam, that, that's all. But um, it happens all the time. So... Um, another thing is that happens very often is that if you know that um, there is a test and that's the main kind of purpose of uh, learning then you will only study for the test and why is this wrong? Uh, let me give you an example um, so, in, in this example, and th this is what I've seen a lot of times, is um, what happens if students study for the test instead of um, trying to understand the material. And so, th this is an example from linear algebra. Um, so, imagine that you have the following question, say, on the final exam, that you have a, a linear operator uh, defined on the space of 2 by 2 matrices, so, its input is a 2 by 2 matrix, and its output is another 2 by 2 matrix, right? And it is uh, defined by the formula that A of X is minus X transposed. And the question is, given a particular matrix, is that matrix its eigenvector? And, of course, if you understand the material, you know that the right solution is just to apply the definition of eigenvectors. So, which means that you feed the, this matrix to the operator and see if the result is proportional to x. So, in this case, it is not so; it is not an eigenvector. But for 
another matrix, it might have been so. It, it would be an eigenvector. But anyway, um, that's the good solution. So this is the solution that you produce if you understand the material. So what is a bad solution? Um, so a, a bad solution is produced when um, is a result of, of a bad habit to um, pre to study for exam incorrectly, right? Um, and this is what I've seen very often that when you study for exam, instead of trying to understand the material, you just try to memorize certain methods, certain algorithms, how to solve uh, some types of problems. And in linear algebra, you learn how to um, compute the matrix of a linear operator. You learn how to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors, so that's the type of a problem. And you also learn how to um, check linear dependence and dependence. And that's another type of a problem. And then if you combine these three into one, then you will get an alternative solution to, to the, the, the same question. But it is very bad because the right solution would probably take you about an, a minute to produce. And the bad solution would probably take you, I don't know, 20 minutes or, or so, because it is very long. So you can, instead of uh, just verifying the definition, you can instead compute the matrix of the, this linear operator, then find uh, eigenvalues, then corresponding eigenvectors, and then see that the given vector is not a linear combination of eigenvectors corresponding to the same um, eigenvalue. That would be a bad solution, and the reason why uh, a student would produce a bad solution is because that student um, studied for the final exam on purpose and um, it made him to um, sort of just memorize algorithms instead of um, understanding the, the material. And this type of behavior and this, of, uh, this type of incorrect studying for the final exam is actually very common. Um, you probably don't notice it because uh, when you are producing a bad solution like this, you just don't realize, right? And also you never see the results of your final exam. But believe me, as an examiner, I, I've seen a lot of... Um, cases of, of this type of mistakes. Sometimes maybe 20% of students make the, this type of mistake. Sometimes it is 50%, but it is never zero. Believe me, it is very, very common. So, uh, and in, in my eyes, it happens because of this uh, final exam that uh, kind of forces you to to memorize a lot of stuff without understanding. So, um, another issue is that even if we believe that the final exam is actually um, a good way to test the amount of knowledge that you have learned, which it is not, by the way, I, I think because it has more to do um, with how well, you can perform under pressure than with the actual knowledge. But anyway, even if, if we believe that um, it correctly assesses the knowledge, then still, and I'm sure you will agree with me, that you will forget everything like two weeks after the final exam. And it's very, there is nothing to be ashamed of. I certainly uh, forgot a lot of stuff from my university. So, for example, um, we had a number theory course and it was very scary. The examiners were very strict. In my university, we didn't have these um, quarters on, on different grades. So it could be that everyone gets an A and it could be that everyone gets a C. But the number theory was particularly tough. And in order to prepare, you know, I, I've learned everything. I was so knowledgeable in number theory. I cannot, Im you couldn't imagine it. And now I don't remember anything. I mean, not now, I, I didn't remember anything like a few weeks after the exam. Other courses, even those with very bad lectures like statistics, since I applied that knowledge, 
I still remember something. So now I am much better in statistics than in number theory, although 20 years ago it was exactly the opposite. So the grade um, in your transcript that you get for each course does not accurately represent the knowledge anymore. I mean, it only shows that um, for one day in your life you managed to accumulate, you know, a certain amount of knowledge and you managed to demonstrate it under pressure. So that's all it shows. And which brings me to the um, next point is that the old system that I'm trying to get away from and actually the whole university is trying to get away from is that the what I don't like about it is that the result of learning is one number which is ridiculous because learning is a very complicated process and how can you um, even think of representing it with one number or with one letter A, B, C it just doesn't really make a lot of sense so my message here is that um, I think that the whole system is is fraudulent and um, of course it worked for a long time it worked for um, hundreds of years but the reason it worked because in the old times there were no technical means to change it so because the only way to get the knowledge was to actually go to the lecture and another reason is that even 50 years ago there were enrollments were lower in universities so m maybe only like those the, who are intrinsically the most motivated just went to universities nowadays um, we have enrollments are much higher and a lot of students are just not so motivated and a lot of lectures are just not so um, entertaining as they, they used to be so we have to do something about it especially since we have technical means to do it and the solution that is currently um, offered or um, that I am going to implement in my course is flipped classroom. So basically the idea of the, the main idea of flipped classroom is that um, instead of this um, mode where you get the knowledge in class and do learning activities at home, you do, we do the opposite. So you get the knowledge at home and do the learning activities at class. All right. Um, so in a way, a flipped classroom can be thought of as organizing a learning environment. So the teacher's job is now to, um, yeah, that, that's again me and my son, by the way. And um, the idea here is that we kind of set up a classroom where you just, want to learn and, and, and you learn by themselves, by, by yourselves. The cycle of activities here will be that you study at home. Usually when you study at home you watch an online lecture. So I will still be lecturing you. Only you will watch lectures at home. If something is unclear in my lectures you can either post a message on the discussion board or uh, I don't know you can just read the textbook or watch a different lecture uh, it is up to you so we we can always figure it out but i will still be lecturing you only not in class and in class we'll have learning activities so you will have to do less homework than usually but you will have to do more in class so you will all those um you know um questions that you solve and studying that will be done in class and there will be a lot of opportunities for you to interact with your tutor and with your peers well and the modern view of assessment is that assessment kind of um, does not have to accurately represent the knowledge that you get in the end because that's simply impossible but 
um, instead it should encourage you to learn so the mode of assessment is is going to force you to to kind of to want to learn um, and also in the end of the course You will still get your grade. Um, I cannot change it. Maybe university will go gradeless. I just don't know. Maybe there will be grades forever, like A, B, C. But that I cannot change. But what I can do for you is that besides the grade, you will get something else. So at the very least, you will get um, your project report that you can add to your portfolio. So, for example, later when you... Um, get a job interview, you can talk about the, the projects that you've done at um, the university instead of just exams. And that will be more interesting for the employers, I guess. Um, or you can, you will also get feedback from your peers that again you can include into your portfolio. So please remember about it. So when you are writing feedback for someone else, please have that in mind that if these people are going to probably show it to uh, to potential employers and you will also um, show feedback from them to their potential employers so please be um, try to be objective try not to be rude uh, try to write with good grammar well um, it's something wrong with um, the flipped classroom approach? Well, yeah, something is wrong. But I, I, I thought for a while and I can only see one thing that is wrong and probably not even is wrong, but maybe wrong with flipped classroom. And as compared to the traditional so direct instruction, that the degree may not be accurate measure of the knowledge that you have accumulated. Because in traditional classroom or in, I don't know, in the majority of courses where you have the final exam, the degree that you get in the end is just measures the sort of the amount of knowledge. So if you learned 80% of the course material, um, then maybe you will get an, I don't know, a, a B plus. If you learned 90% of the course material, then you will probably get an A and so on. So here, it is not so straightforward. So instead, um, I have tried to design the grading system in order to um, to facilitate learning, in order to encourage you to participate in the class activities. But strictly speaking, it it might not be so bad because even if um, you know, in um, traditional classroom with final exams, even then the, the grade is not exactly um, an accurate indicator of the knowledge because the final exam has probably more to do with um, how well you can handle stress in the exam hall rather than with the actual you know, skills. Well, anyway, uh, so that, that's basically the motivation uh, for the flipped classroom design in the differential equations class. And now uh, let me explain how the gradient is going to be done. So there, there, there are still grades. And I have to be honest with you that you will probably work harder than ever than in all other four AU courses. So that's the feedback that I got from students last year. But at the same time you will get better grades. Uh, you already know it from your algorithms and computing three class where, which I also taught and the, the grades are much better than you know the default grades that come from uh, certain percentages allocated to A, A minus, B plus and so on and they are completely justified because you deserved those better grades although yeah you had to work harder so that's kind of the situation here um, in terms of breakdown by different components, there will be 40% for team-based learning. I am, there is another video about team-based learning that um, I will, you, you, you can watch. 
20% will be a midterm test. Um, I'm not sure if it is a good idea, so maybe we could, um, maybe later in a few years I will just abandon it um, at all the midterm test, but now I'm, I still want to keep it a little bit. Last year we had a final exam, now there is no final exam at all. So at least that I've, I've managed to do, but uh, still that there is a midterm test, which is only 20%. And it's going to be open book, so I hope it's it's not very stressful. Um, and 40% is going to be for the team project. Very, very similar to um, what you had in algorithms and computing three. So then, again, in the end, I'm not going to apply the standard percentages because the whole course um, design does not fit into these... Um, um, kind of paradigm where um, you are graded against each other and you compete for grades. I hope that I will be allowed to do that. At least I was allowed to do that last year and I was allowed to do that with um, algorithms and computing three. So instead, it's going to be something like this. There is a cutoff for A, there is a cutoff for, for D. Um, I am not going to tell you what the cutoffs are, but for the sake of the... Um, story, imagine that the cutoff for A is 80 and the cutoff for D is 40. So then uh, I will just split them into equal intervals and then you get a D if your raw score is between 40 and 45, you get a, a D plus if your raw score is between 45 and 50 and so on. But I'm not going to tell you what the cutoffs are because um, if you know them in advance, then you might want to cheat the system, you will abuse it. Say, for example, if you know that you are definitely above the cutoff and you are definitely getting an A, then you may want to um, do your team evaluation unfairly. Or you may want to just agree with your team members to um, give each other a certain um, evaluation so that to ensure the, the optimal grade for everyone. Um, you just please remember that you don't compete with each other for grades. So instead you will be graded against a certain standard that I have in my head. It's just that I will not tell the standard to you beforehand. After the grades are released you can figure it out, of course, but not, not in advance. Alright, um, but besides the grades, you will get something else uh, that you can show off in your, uh, I don't know, job interviews, like the project report and the project slides. So um, the reason here is that um, you can, you know, when you um, apply for jobs, you can in include it into your CV and you can talk about um, the, the project during the interview. So if you are passionate enough and you, if you, then it will probably help you to to get a job. Another thing is that uh, you will get feedback from peers and again if you um, even if your final grade is not very good maybe it is like B minus but if you demonstrate excellent um, communication skills and it is shown from uh, your peer feedback clearly then you can um, include that into your resume. Yeah, and finally, very often students ask me to write a reference letter. Um, so, if the, of course, in the class of 200 students, I simply don't remember the names. And usually it just, you know, comes out of nowhere that some student who I just don't remember asks me for a reference. And if the only thing that I have is, is test results, then it's ri ridiculous. I cannot write an in informative letter about you. But if I have access to all that information, to all your feedback, to all your um, project work, then it is much easier for me to write a letter. And then you can just ask me to, to write a letter. All right. Um, I hope that I've provided enough justification for um, why the course is designed um, unusually and why there is no final exam and why there are no lectures in class. 
Again, there are four things that are wrong with the traditional system and only one thing that is wrong with the flipped classroom and it is not entirely wrong in my view. That's why I'm doing this. Believe me, it is a lot of work to me. So, and I'm doing all this that I'm doing just to improve your... Um, for the sake of education, to teach you better. So I, I hope for that, that you understand now. Okay, thank you very much.